Welcome to the weekly Parsha of uh, Zer Shimshon. <clears throat> and uh, it's Thursday, Gimel Nisan Tavshin Pei Aleph. And we're going to do a little peep from Tazri, even though it's a double portion. I can't, it'll be almost double what I'm going to do. <laughs> and I do have a Segula this week, so hang in there. <clears throat> okay, so the Midrash says, the first piece in the capital Aleph, it says, the Midrash Rabbah says, Ki'isha ki Sazriya. How did who receive? This is what it says in Tehillim Kuflam at Tez, Amit Kapitol He. It says, Achor Bekedim Tzartani, in the back and the front, I created you. Omar Rabbi Biochan and Im Zacha, if a person is privileged, Adam Neichal Shteyai Lamais. A person will be privileged to have two worlds, Hazeh or Haba. In this world, he'll have the pleasures of this world and the pleasures of the world to come. It says, That's what the Pasuk indicates. The, the back and the front I have created you. It means totally something different. It's a drasha. So, It indicates that Adam Arishim was created um, as a, um, two human beings in one. So, we're called androgynous, I guess, is the word, the fancy word in English. It's not exactly correct, but because he had the female was the pack, the back of him, and the and the male was the front. But anyway, and then God separated him into the operation, the first operation in history, and He separated them into two beings. So if he doesn't have pleasure in this world and the next world, he's going to have to pay the price. As they, they come to judgment. Yish didactic. That's the end of the Midrash, okay? Puzzling Midrash. So what do you, how do you mean to say that he could inherit both worlds if he's a tzaddik? What's going on? In this world, the, the tzaddikim are known to get afflictions. They can they take care of their, uh, their few of errors that they have. The wicked are given all the peace and tranquility and money in the world. Okay, and then it says in the in the midrash that if he's not, he's going to have to pay the price. He can give final judgment. But that's the opposite of the beginning of the of the midrash. He should have said, He said, if he doesn't do what he's supposed to do, then he can lose both worlds. Okay, so Nagdim Ami, the Rabbanim departed from Rabbi the Yeshiva of Rabbi Ami, and some say it was Rabbi Hanina, was from the Yeshiva of Rabbi Hanina. This became a famous song. So it's your world you will see in your life. Mm. In the end, we'll be having the world to come. Rashi says it there in the world. I'm quoting Rashi now. Your world you will see in your life. All of your necessities you will see. That's what he means. So it says like, and so It sounds like it's talking about Eilam Hazer. And it's not possible that we could be saying that he's eating his reward for the world to come in this lifetime because mitzvahs are not forgiven in this life. They can't be paid off in this life. And this pasuk in Mishlei Yud Gimel, it's uh, known that that tzaddik just eats to satisfy himself. He doesn't run after getting extra pleasures in this world. He's too busy learning. He's got to do daf yomi, right? Like the wicked, it says, the, the belly of the wicked will be lacking. In other words, they're never satisfied. They need another ice cream, another candy bar, another cigarette, another whatever. Because 
really the truth is that that tzaddik doesn't have any peace and rest in this world. But nidoin be yisurim, he's judged by yisurim, having afflictions. Avol mikol makom kol tzorchei hu mitzah bekalos boli tarah. However, whatever he needs, he'll find it easily. He'll not be tra- tra- troubled with finding his uh, parnasa. So kidar mina gemar shabbos daf kufnu ane ala from the base gemiri. We have an established tradition. The tzorchel the tzorba merabban and loy meani veloy me the tzorba merabban a real true talmud chacham doesn't become impoverished. And if he does become impoverished, he doesn't have to run around and collect from door to door. That's the portion that he inherits in this world. It doesn't add up to any, any of his, uh, the reward of his mitzvahs, or his Torah learning for sure not. He only eats or what is necessary to keep his body going. Dafka. And only what's absolutely necessary. But the wicked. That he's having a pleasure from this world. And he runs after all the extra fancy stuff. The, they say here in the luxus. You know. Okay. says, Din we like it did. He's got to pay. In the end, he's going to have to give a final judgment and that he had a pleasure in this world improperly. He wasn't deserving. Because the person is only created to work with his mouth. Mm-hmm. That's why it says this, this year is Peh. Yeah? Right? Okay. The Omru, the Midrash Rabbah says, and Gana Nefesh Luitimali. He also doesn't fill his soul up. Okay, the Tzadik. The Omru Rabbi Midrash Rabbah says, the Midrash Rabbah by Yikro Dalad, Kol Mitzvah Israel, Maisim Taivish Oisa Adam, Enam Mastikim Lehevo, Ayetze Mipi. All the mitzvahs and good deeds that the person does doesn't add up to a little bit of Torah learning. That's the Hevo P that comes out of his mouth. And especially somebody that has a lot of pleasure from it. If he doesn't, he'll have to come. They didn't lift a in the Hezbun and have to pay for judgment on this that he didn't enjoy himself in this world by learning. Okay, still the problem is. That what is the pasuki isha ki sazria got to do with the back and the front? I've created you. The comer hada who the chesiv says achav kedem. Well, what's it got to do with anything over here? Yish the tarets shall Rabbi Yochanan hear gish kushya al pasuk achav kedem. Rabbi Yochanan sensed there was a difficulty with this pasuk. What what we're supposed to say? But here gish mami kushya acheres al pasuk isha ki sazria, and he sensed another. Difficulty with the pasuk isha kis hazria. Well, be starfu shneya me toretz hakol. So when we combine the answers, we'll have a teretz for everything. The hainu. The achar vekedem kasha leisha isha loy leimer kedem veachar. He should have said not achar backwards and forwards. No, he should have said forward and backwards. Right? They created you. The ainu yachal I taretz of far shah pasuk al oylem hazer oylem abo. You can't say it's talking about the world to c- on this world and the world to come. Shahari Achar is Mashmoy Shal Oilam Hab Azeh. I'm sorry. The, the Achar is Mashma, that means after everything, which is the world to come. The Kedem is Mashmoy Al Oilam Hazeh. And Kedem is Mashma and this world. Kemoy Shapiri Sham Balat Matnois Kahuna was one of the Mephorshim on the Midrash. The Hadar Kushyan. Leduchta. So our question comes back to the beginning. First of all, you have a world in this world, and then you're going to, after you accumulate the Torah mitzvahs, then you go to the world to come. Okay? And furthermore, and the Pasuk, and this Pasuk says, the woman seeds first. She have been a kevah kasa la pasuk im 
Nekeva Telid, the Lushan, you know, that was, this is a Lushan Shema. It's a, it's a possibility. It's not a, a absolute. So, but the Zohar, it says, Ki Sazria, Vyalva. It says it's like an absolute. When she sees first, there will, there will be a male. It sounds like that the Torah is more makbid on a male being born as opposed to a woman, a female. <clears throat> so anybody who, what's the I'll go back and translate here. <clears throat> What's the advantage, we'll call it, or the strength of a male over the female? It doesn't matter. The Gemara says that if you keep one nefesh alive, that doesn't matter if it's male or female, then it's like you're keeping a whole world alive. And the mitzvah period is going to have male and a female. Otherwise, you're not yet said a mitzvah. Ella, Vada Tsurchlaimasha Hefresh Shabin Zakhan and Kiva who is Za. The difference is be this. Sha Zakhar Mikhuyu de Sasik the Iske Alaman Azba. The male has to be engaged in the worldly man in in the other worldly matters like Torah and Mitzvah. Dafka Vinashim Iske Alamaza. And women are supposed to be engaged in the worldly matters. Vahin Zoikha is the Khaya Ilamaba Lakah. And they are privileged to the world to come doing that. By being engaged in worldly matters. Right? That's why they were given the job to have children. Men couldn't do it. So a person, a man brings a wheat, he'll just chew on them. He doesn't find a, a curse in his eyes. And it stand, helps him continue be on his feet. That's, a pas- that's from Tanadavili Yahu Rabba Tess. The, the only Kashira with the prepared woman is the one that does the will of her husband. Of course, it, it means that if he's doing the right things, he's keeping Torah Mitzvahs. Even though they're gonna do, they're gonna get, they're, you know, they're privileged to the world to come at this. Still, the 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 actual birth of the male is better, preferable to the birth of the female. The the male, even though he's young and he doesn't know how to do anything for in this worldly things, he's not capable of being trained in the mitzvahs either. Still, without doing anything, he's privileging his parents to the world, his father and his mother to the world to come. So his father gets to do meal on him, and he teaches him how to say the basic first couple of words of the Torah. Torah Tzibononu, and then Shema Yisrael. Take it. As soon as he begins to speak, and he teaches him the Aleph base, the holy letters. Man, she inkin ha'isha, she ain't a chayavis betama Torah. Klau, woman is not obligated to learn Torah at all. That's the only reason man is obligated to learn Torah, so therefore his birth is more chashev. So therefore, the Pasuk says, it comes very good, it says backwards and forward. In other words, the back is first and then the and forward. He's the first one, the male, is privileged to the, and he privileges his parents also to the world to come. Kidarmina, Perkid Aleph, the Sanhedrin. Cotton ball, the oil, as a ball. 
אישה של נימו, אישה של סיפר, אישה של אומר אומר. So the little child is already zeichet for the world to come when he gets a bris milah, or he starts speaking the Torah, or he says an omen. The nimtza shemishas leida mevi zechus la'olam avo imoy af la'oviv shemachan l'chayim. So he brings the merits of the world to come with him as soon as he's coming into the world, and also as soon as his father trains him and educates him. Therefore, when he raises him, he gets better. When he raises him up, he gets to be bar mitzvah. So he's also able to pay, and be privileged to have a pleasure from this world. Even though the female is necessary for the needs of this world, it amina bepergs avivid mitzia. Bob Metzia says, Right? If you have a wife, Gutsa, you have to bend over and speak to her. In other words, if you have a wife that's low, right? That's in other words, she's not as tall as you, then you bend over and speak to her with with decency. But at the time of the birthing, and her, when she's young, there's no pleasure from her in the world to come, for the world to come. So which is not true for the, the male, according to, this is Rabbi Zer I'm not uh, trying to be a misogynist or something. It's, uh, this is the way the Torah looks at it. He, she doesn't have any, she doesn't give any um, some merits for people to get the world to come. Therefore, therefore he, he made, he preceded the male to the female to come into the world. A man comes before the woman. That's why it says when a woman gives birth and has a male. It says that if she has a female. But furthermore, that in order that all of her thoughts should be in the world to come, even though that sometimes a male has to be engaged in worldly matters, should make his taira more permanent and his work more, less permanent. You know, temporary work. still in all, then God made, it's interesting, it should be the ark already, that when the woman gives the seed first, then she will have a male. And if, it, when, and if, if, the, if the man gives the seed first, he has a female. She will give birth to a female. Why did the Torah attribute the kibos, the female femininity to the male? Okay. It teaches that a man can't be without a woman. He has to get married. So similarly, if you want to get to Oilam Abo, you've got to do it through the being engaged in this worldly manners also. Like it says in Baruch Gemara and Baruch Hastaf Lamed, hey, learned only, but the other Rabbanim learned part time, and they and and they were able to keep their Torah. So it said many tried to do like Rabbi Shimon by Yechai, but they didn't succeed. You've got to add a little spice of Olam Hazer in there. 
if a person hadn't sinned, Adam Arishan hadn't sinned, he would have had eternal life. Like in the world to come. He would have been sitting in Gan Eden like the angels. After he sinned, he was divorced from Gan Eden, and he was decreed on him death. The first is and afterwards, because in the beginning it really should have been completely the world to come. And that's the Achar part. But after he sinned, that's named Kedem. This, the reliance in this Pasuk and the and on the uh, on the on the of ki isha ki isha ki caesar sazria and he she gives birth to pasta de kra mashma she take she tazria taylor so really it's mashma from the pasuk even that the me in she should give birth the same day she she um she had relation with her husband like it says in the in the gemara in the end of ksubas it says we all and it says in the pasuk in yermiyar lamad aleph and she will become impregnated and give birth same day. If Adam hadn't sinned, it would be that way in, the, in this world. But after the, Adam sinned, there has to be a the distance between giving birth and and having relations. And of course, of course, in Chava also sins, so she gets her punishments for that. Okay, the segula of the Zer Shimshon today is precious in the second krach. I think it's in the second krach in Tazria. Yeah. yeah, it's a Mitzvah, I'm sorry. Jack Rosen was shown a uh, yeah, direct correlation between life choice and injury to the point where there didn't seem to be a question about how to look at this, uh, his situation. Sometimes that's just the way things work out. A person is left and with no questions at all. One day Rabbi Benyamin Ben Pashkis ran to a friend who told him that his son had been doing had been going out for years with nothing to show for it. Things have gotten so dry, the boy, his father, told his friend that not one shidduch has been read to us in the last four months. So it happened, it so happened that Rabbi Yomid was holding a copy of the weekly Zereshimshan newsletter in his hands. Right at that moment, he handed it to his friend and said, I want you to begin learning Zereshimshan. Rabbi Yomid then told him a bunch of stories about people who saw major Yeshua's, stories that he himself had been part of. I have been men, I have seen many incredible twists in people's lives, Rabbi Yomin said to his friend. I have seen turnabouts in every area of life, from business to Shalom Bayez to Shaduchim. And I'm talking about boys and girls who are already, already much older. I'm talking <clears throat> people who everyone had already given up on. Then they became then they began learning Rezer Shimshim and suddenly the, we were at their vort and the Shaduchim were amazing. Mamish. In every way. They talked for a very long time and eventually they parted in each in their own direction. Two hours later, Rabbi Yom noticed that he had a message on his phone. He listened to the message and immediately realized that it had been been left by a friend that he had just convinced to learn Zerah Shemshin. Rabbi Yom, he said, this is Shaya Kars Kreiser, like name. Please call me as soon as you hear this message. Rabbi Yom heard the urgency in his friend's voice and became very, very nervous. What could possibly have occurred between their phone conversation and now? Rabbi Yaman, at least he called him back. He said, Shia, what happened? What's the emergency? Rabbi Yaman could hear the emotion in his friend's voice as he related what had happened. I took the newsletter that you gave me, he began, and I, instead of going directly where I needed to go, I found a spot where I was able to sit down and learn all the Torah in the newsletter there, then and there. 
When I finished reading everything in the newsletter, I looked up to the heavens and said the following, I am being mekabel on myself right now to begin a regular learning Seder in Zer Shimsa. Then I went home. Half an hour later, my phone rang. It was a shatcha calling me with an idea. Rabbi Yaman, for people who get calls from Shadchanim on a regular basis, that's not a big deal. But for a person like myself, who hadn't received a call from Shadchanim in four months, this is what I call was a very big deal. I got off the phone and completely shocked by the turn of events. I felt like I had been, I had just been on the receiving end of a sign from Shemayim, and that my decision to start learning Zer Shimshim was 100% the way to go. The fact that Ashadchan had called me so quickly seemed to be reassuring me that the merit of the holy of Shimshin Chaim Nachmeni, Zechatzadikavracha, the author of the Zer Shimshin himself, was going to stand by my side and intercede for me until I saw Yeshua's in my personal life. Rabbi Yaman, there is no question in my mind that you are right and that there is nothing better for me to do right now than to learn this Chashav a Sefer, a Sefer that has brought so much siyat to the Smayo to Klai Yisrael. Okay, and he goes on and said, I hope to be in touch with you. But he, just the fact that he was mekabel on himself to learn the Zer Shimshin on a regular basis was enough to get a, a phone call from the Shadchan. And I'm homely that the Shidduch did turn out, and that's Hashem, and they're married. The Shadchan of much All right, I get to have a good Shabbos, everybody, and a wonderful Chodesh Iyar. Ani Hashem Reifecho. So you should bring all Yeshua's and the Chamois and Refuas to all Gans Kleiser, all those who need it. Okay, cold to the bench.